Have you ever wondered how a single cell gone rogue can pose a serious threat to your health? Welcome to our deep dive into the world of leukemia. Leukemia, a term that often sends a shiver down the spine, is more than just a word. It's a complex medical condition, a form of cancer that starts in the body's blood-forming tissues, primarily the bone marrow and the lymphatic system. Imagine a small factory within your body, tirelessly producing cells. Now picture a glitch in this production line where some cells begin to multiply uncontrollably, disrupting the harmony. That's essentially what happens in leukemia. These rogue cells, once part of a well-oiled machine, now turn against the body, overcrowding the blood and marrow, leaving no room for healthy cells. This results in a range of symptoms, from fatigue and fever to increased risk of infections and uncontrolled bleeding. But like any complex issue, leukemia isn't a one-size-fits-all disease. It comes in different types and subtypes, each with its unique characteristics and challenges. In this video, we'll be exploring the various types of leukemia, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, ALL, acute myeloid leukemia, AML, chronic myeloid leukemia, CML, and chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL. We'll also delve into the leukemia subtypes, L1, L2, L3, M1, M2, and M3, along with a fascinating structure known as our rods. Understanding these types is not just about medical jargon, it's about knowing how these conditions affect our bodies, how they present themselves, and how they are treated. It's about understanding the fight that thousands of people worldwide face daily. It's about empathy, knowledge, and the hope for a cure. So, as we embark on this intricate journey, remember that every piece of information brings us one step closer to understanding, managing, and ultimately defeating this formidable foe. To understand leukemia better, we need to delve into the different types. So buckle up for a journey into the microscopic world of our own bodies. Imagine a factory producing defective products non-stop. That's similar to what happens in acute lymphoblastic leukemia and acute myeloid leukemia. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia, or ALL, is like a factory gone haywire, producing an overabundance of lymphocytes, a type of white blood cell. These immature lymphocytes aren't fully formed, so they can't perform their usual tasks, like fighting infections. Instead, they clog up the bone marrow, preventing the production of healthy blood cells. The result? A body that's increasingly vulnerable to infections and fatigue. On the other hand, acute myeloid leukemia, or AML, is a bit of a different story. It's another type of factory gone wrong, but this time, it's the myeloid cells that are the culprits. These cells should mature into red blood cells, platelets, and some types of white blood cells. But in AML, they remain immature, multiplying rapidly and crowding out the healthy cells in the bone marrow. This leads to anemia, bleeding problems, and a higher susceptibility to infections. While ALL and AML may sound similar, they originate from different types of cells and have different effects on the body. ALL primarily affects lymphocytes and is most common in children, whereas AML impacts myeloid cells and is more often seen in adults. One might ask, why does this matter? Well, the differences between ALL and AML can drastically influence the course of treatment. For instance, ALL often responds well to chemotherapy, while AML might require a more aggressive approach, such as a bone marrow transplant. In essence, understanding the differences between ALL and AML is critical in devising a proper treatment plan and predicting the patient's prognosis. These two forms of leukemia, though similar in name, are distinct in their origins, manifestations, and treatment approaches. AALL and AML, though similar in name, have distinct differences that can drastically influence the course of treatment. Now, what if the factory, instead of producing defective products, just kept producing more and more of the same product? This gives us a peek into chronic myeloid leukemia and chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Imagine our body as a factory where the production line is the bone marrow and the products are white blood cells. In chronic myeloid leukemia, or CML, the factory goes into overdrive. It produces an excessive number of white blood cells, specifically the myeloid cells. These cells, although normal, start crowding out other cells, leading to an imbalance. 
CML is a slow-growing form of leukemia, hence the term chronic. It's like a factory that has lost control of its production schedule and continues to churn out white blood cells even when there's no need for them. This overproduction can lead to fatigue, weight loss, and an enlarged spleen as the body struggles to process the surplus cells. On the other hand, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, or CLL, is slightly different. Here, the factory is producing too many lymphocytes, a type of white blood cell. These cells are not entirely normal, but they're not as abnormal as the rapidly dividing cells seen in acute leukemia. They are like slightly defective products that still make it past quality control, leading to a buildup in the body. Like CML, CLL is also a slow-growing leukemia. Patients might not even realize they have it until a routine blood test shows a high count of lymphocytes. Symptoms when they appear can include fatigue, swollen lymph nodes, and frequent infections as the surplus lymphocytes interfere with the body's immune response. So, while acute leukemias are like a factory producing defective goods rapidly, chronic leukemias are more about an overproduction of goods even if they're not as defective. The impact on the body is less immediate but still significant over time as the surplus cells interfere with normal bodily functions. CML and CLL remind us that even a surplus of something good can be harmful. Like a book with many chapters, Leukemia 2 has subtypes. Let's flip through these chapters of L1, L2, L3, M1, M2, and M3. The L1, L2, and L3 subtypes are part of the acute lymphoblastic leukemia or all family, whereas M1, M2, and M3 fall under acute myeloid leukemia or AML. These labels carry significant information about the nature of the disease and help clinicians decide on the most effective course of treatment. L1, also known as B-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia, is most common in children and is characterized by small uniform cells. L2, or B-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia in adults, presents with larger and more variable cells. L3, also known as Burkitt's leukemia, is rare and characterized by very large cells with vacuoles or small cavities. Moving on to the AML subtypes, we have M1, M2, and M3. M1, also known as acute myeloblastic leukemia with minimal maturation, is characterized by immature myeloblasts and a lack of granulocytes. M2, or acute myeloblastic leukemia with maturation, presents with a mixture of mature and immature granulocytes. M3, also known as acute promyelocytic leukemia, is unique because it is associated with a particular genetic translocation and the cells are filled with granules. Now let's talk about our rods. These are needle-like inclusions seen in the cytoplasm of certain leukemia cells, particularly AML. Named after the pathologist who first described them, John Auer, these rods are bundles of proteins and enzymes that are typically involved in the fight against infections. They are a crucial diagnostic tool, and their presence is often indicative of a more aggressive form of leukemia. In essence, these subtypes help us to decode the story of leukemia in a patient. They guide us through the narrative of the disease, providing crucial information about its nature, progression, and potential response to treatment. These subtypes show us the complexity of leukemia and the importance of precise diagnosis. We've journeyed through the intricate world of leukemia, but what are the key points to remember? Let's take a moment to recap our exploration. We began with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, or ALL, a cancer of the lymphoid line of blood cells. It's most common in children but can also affect adults. We noted its swift progression which requires immediate intervention. Then we dived into acute myeloid leukemia or AML, a cancer of the myeloid line of blood cells. Unlike ALL, AML is more common in adults and it's associated with several genetic mutations that can affect its prognosis and treatment. Moving forward, we ventured into the realm of chronic myeloid leukemia or CML, a type of cancer that starts in certain blood-forming cells of the bone marrow. We underscored that CML is typically a slow-progressing disease and is associated with a specific genetic abnormality known as the Philadelphia chromosome. Our journey continued with chronic lymphocytic leukemia, or CLL, a slow-growing cancer of the lymphocytes. We pointed out that CLL often affects older adults, 
and is usually diagnosed through routine blood tests before symptoms even begin to appear. Finally, we navigated the subtypes of leukemia, L1, L2, L3, M1, M2, and M3, each having its unique characteristics and clinical presentations. We also discussed our rods, abnormal structures found in some types of leukemia that are essential diagnostic markers. Why are these variations important? Well, each type of leukemia has its unique presentation, progression speed, and response to treatment. Understanding these differences is crucial in the diagnosis and treatment process. It helps doctors to tailor treatment plans, and it aids researchers in their quest for new therapies. Remember that despite their differences, all types of leukemia share one common thing, an uncontrolled growth of abnormal white blood cells. This understanding is the first step towards fighting this group of diseases. Remember, knowledge is power. The more we understand about conditions like leukemia, the better equipped we are to fight them.